um, President Trump moving a, the same President Trump moving a step closer to implementing his health care agenda. The Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services are out with new pricing transparency proposals following up on a presidential executive order from last month. Uh, here with more is uh, Health and Human Services Secretary uh, Alex Azar. And uh, Mr. Secretary, reading these, I'll tell you, I was struck with um, with the notion that I, it, it just seems like it should have been this way all along. Some of the stuff is like just seems obvious Why, about hospital pricing, for example. We, it was totally uh, we had no idea. It was totally opaque up to this point. Why? Well, because the vested special interests don't want you to know the price of their products before you have to buy them. For decades, they've been able to get away with this gig. And it's taken President Trump and his courage and willingness to just fight for the American people here to do this. You know, he heard from the American people, which is we should know what something costs before we have to buy it. We should end these surprise medical bills. And that's what we're delivering on. The president said in his executive order he wanted full transparency of pricing. And I ordered our Medicare agency yesterday to require hospitals to disclose their charges and disclose what their negotiated discounts are with the insurance plan so that the patient will have the right to have this information before they pick where they'll get their services delivered. It, it's kind of a, a commentary on how everyone feels when they're in the hospital. I think you, you tend to give the, your caregivers the benefit of the doubt when, you, when you're there, and you want the absolute best care, and you're in kind of a weakened position. And it, it's hard to believe that, that uh, caregivers would take advantage, but these are big, some of them for-profit hospitals, and I guess you, just like anything else, you need, you need to know what you're buying or, or else you're going to get taken advantage of. Yeah, it's all part of the president's vision for how we improve health in the United States, which is personalized, affordable health care that puts you, the patient, in control, treats you like a human being, not like a number. And you can't be in the driver's seat in the hospital, in the doctor's office, at the pharmacy counter, if you aren't empowered with information. You need to know the price of the goods and services you're being asked to buy and quality information about them. And that's what President Trump is working to deliver. And Medicare needs to you do hospitals then, okay, we've got to do surgical centers, ambulatory surgical then we've got to do renal care, then we've got to do physicians, then we've got to, it's, you can't just do one. That's why it gets very arcane. I don't know if we want to go over all this, but you need to specifically give guidelines to all these different uh, outlets. Yeah, so I've got the authority to do this by statute for hospitals to make sure hospitals post their standard charges. And for broader across the healthcare system and all providers, what the president's executive order calls for is a rule that would require the insurance companies also to provide this information so that whether a doctor, an ambulatory surgical center, or otherwise, you would have to disclose what's the list price, what's the negotiated discount. And what's the out-of-pocket? Right now, you get this information. You get it on this explanation of benefits. But it comes 30 days after you get the service. And what we're going to tell, tell these insurance companies is push the button sooner. Just send me that information so I can decide where I'm going to get that CAT scan done or that lab test or that hip replacement and really compete based on price and quality. The... Uh the drug industry, obviously, is, is uh, we, we've used the term barbarians at the gate uh, earlier. They, they know the drug, uh, we've had a good year in the stock market, but drug stocks are all down based on possible uh, pricing. We had the CEO of Eli Lilly on uh, earlier, and we just talked about the overall uh, system. This is what he had to say, and you can respond to this. The issue in our country is not the cost of medications to the healthcare system. 15% of the healthcare dollar goes to drugs. We could uh, cap that forever, and what we get is less innovation and still have growing health care costs. What we need to do is work on out-of-pocket costs for those patients who need innovative medicines. And some of the proposals, the ones we're focused on, uh, could in fact do that. So we agree it's time for change, and we agree that patients need relief in the cost of medications. We don't agree with the rhetoric, and we certainly uh, don't agree with a lot of the, the solutions, quote-unquote, being put out there. What do you think, Mr. Secretary? I mean, are you on different pages with, with the drug CEOs, would you say, or is everyone trying to get to the same place? Uh, well, I think we're on sometimes different pages, but I'll tell you the page that President Trump and I are on, which is that we're fighting for the American patient, and 
what we've heard from the American patient is I'm paying too much for my drugs. The list prices are too high. I'm paying too much out of pocket. And I'm sick and tired of Europeans getting a better deal than I get on my drugs when we're the biggest, most powerful country on earth. So that's why President Trump is committed to ending that foreign free riding and having America's seniors stop overpaying for their drugs to support and prop up the socialist systems in Europe. It's why he's so committed and I'm working with him. I just was on the phone with him working on a plan to how we could import drugs safely and effectively from Canada so the American people get the benefit of the deals that pharma themselves are striking with other countries. They're giving these drugs to other countries at these discounts. They're Mr. choosing to sell them at these lower prices. We want these benefits. Mr. Secretary, how is this going to be um, different, if you will, than the, the effort to, to change prices or, or to uh, disclose prices uh, on television ads? Obviously, a federal judge uh, stopped that. Not really um, questioning the wisdom of the idea, but the jurisdiction, if you will, of the administration to do it. Yes, yeah, so we're going to keep working using all of our regulatory authority. The president's committed to using every power he has to try to make these changes. We're also working with Congress. You know, we had a really big development last week. The Senate Finance Committee put out a bipartisan piece of legislation that, that really tackles so many of these problems and is complementary to the even stronger efforts that President Trump is taking on drug pricing. And that got out of committee 19 to 9 over the objections of the pharma companies. And now we're going to work on a bipartisan basis. Basis, try to get that to the Senate floor and get it passed out of Congress. Mr. Secretary, I understand that you're fighting for the American consumer, and, and I, of course, am one of them who wants to pay less for drug prices and less for hospital procedures and want to know the cost of the hospital procedures. But is this effectively a shot across the bow uh, to hospital companies as well as drug companies? Hey, you guys, we're going to make things more transparent. Prices will, in fact, come down, and it's going to hit your bottom line. Well, whether it hits the bottom line or not, it, it is not so much relevant to us. It's what's good for the American patient. It's, it, it's putting them at the center of the system and putting them in control of their own health and their own health care. And so what we're trying to do is drive across three major domains in health care that allow us to protect what works in health care, protect Medicare, protect private health insurance. That's 240 million Americans right there. Protect that. Make it better but fix what's broken in health care. So fix health care financing. Make sure there are affordable options available for people. Fix the, how we deliver health care so that we pay for outcomes, so that we have price and quality transparency. And then fix key health disease areas like kidney care. Fix HIV AIDS. Fix rural health care, maternal mortality. Those three domains uh, impact all 330 million Americans, and it's, that's the holistic vision for health that President Trump is articulating and is working on. But, uh, I mean, both you and the president, though, do have uh, an understanding of the, the cost that goes into developing some of these treatments, especially maybe for, for small patient populations, and the necessity to have a return on capital invested by these companies in the first place, could result in drugs costing 20000 a year, 50000 a year, whatever it is. And, you know, I know a pill costs a dollar to make, but you can't just use that red herring constantly to talk down prices or else we're not going to have a drug industry left in the, in the United States anymore. I mean, it's a fine line that, you know, you don't want to kill the goose that, that lays the golden eggs. Oh, we completely understand that. You've got a president and a secretary who are both business leaders. We understand financials. I understand that business in particular intimately. But that canard of if you take one dollar out of our revenue or profitability, you won't get any more drugs, it proves too much. It's been the justification for the status quo and 20 percent per year price well, increases. Why have any patent protection then for, for this? Make everything, I mean, it, you know, obviously there, there is a point where the system would break down and you'd get no more innovation. Well, we are, the, we are vigorous defenders of the patent system, but that doesn't mean that we have to pay whatever somebody says you pay. We can still negotiate. We can still have a comp create a competitive, transparent marketplace for drugs. Uh, let's remember that even the last proposal we put out on ending foreign free riding would have saved $3.5 billion per year out of the pharmaceutical industry's revenue. Yeah. You know, that's, they, they, inve they, they invest about $70 billion per year in R&D. They put about 20 percent of their revenue into R&D, so that's 700 million. So even, even the one that they're screaming hysterically about, the proposed change that we've made, 
would be a 1% change in R&D investment. And frankly, yeah. if they can't find 1% in their OPEX to maximize, they're not running their businesses very well. Uh, Mr. Secretary, I have one final question for you, which is, you know, when your t during your time at Eli Lilly, uh, clearly uh, you helped push prices up. I mean, that was actually one of the critiques uh, in your role, that you pushed prices up, insulin and other, and other things. And I just wanted to get your sense is, is in terms of your shift now, is it a change in responsibilities that, that, that put you in this new position of, of, of wanting to lower the prices? Is there a responsibility you think that the executives have to do it themselves? Square, well, the, th square the circle for, 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 for those viewers who are asking the question. Well, listen, I'd love it if uh, drug company CEOs would lower their prices, and some have on some products. We've seen that in reaction to President Trump's leadership. But the simple fact is this entire system is designed where everybody profits from drug list prices increasing yeah. and rebates going up to the PBMs, the middlemen. the question, the Mr. Secretary, is that you were part of the system that drove prices higher. Well, and that's exactly why I can, as secretary, lead this effort to change the rules of the road and change the system, because I know how that system works. I, that's why I've got so much passion to fixing it. It is a broken system. You know how system. much drug companies jacked up prices unfairly on the American consumer, and so that's why you can undo that? I can change the rules of the road, and I'm working with Congress to change the rules of the road so that they have the financial incentives to actually have prices go down. You know, you're not going to get altruistic behavior by drug companies or anybody else just voluntarily saying, I'm going to leave profitable money sitting by the sidelines and minimize shareholder value. You've got to change the rules right. of the road right. so that that's in their best interest if you want a sustainable system. And that's what the president and I are doing, both through regulation as well as working on a bipartisan basis with Congress to, right. to fix the system long term, to rewire it the right way.